Okay, at this point now we're ready to deploy a debug version of the app and install it onto our device. Now, in order to debug, we debug wirelessly, meaning that the phone or device, iPad, whichever, is on a Wi-Fi network that is also on the same network as our development device. So I'm on a laptop, and so it's easy to make sure we're on the same wireless network. If you're on a desktop, make sure you're on the same network from wireless to the LAN. So uh, make sure you're set up. If I look over here at the phone, uh, make sure you're connected wirelessly. Also, I went ahead and deleted the old app uh, just for the sake of making sure I install it without any trouble. Also, I deleted it from iTunes just to make sure everything's clean, ready to go. Now, we're back here in our simple iOS app. Let's go ahead and choose the edit application settings and click over to deployment. And deployment talks about uh, we want to choose device debugging. So go ahead and select that. And I realize you can't see the buttons, but we want to click the one that says publish. Now this will go ahead and publish the movie. And, and again, we have this little uh, timeline status bar. And I'm going to pause and we're going to come back. All right, now we have this uh, already built. Go ahead and click OK. And then uh, click over to the folder where you've got the app built. And let's take a look. Um, sorry, you can ignore this. I made a mistake. Ha 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 ha. These are temporary files. I had canceled a build earlier today, so that's what that is. All right, let's take a look at the iOS app IPA. Notice that it's a little larger. Uh, the, the first one was 3.9 meg, and this was 4.6. Well, here we have additional debugging codes to allow us to uh, do the Wi-Fi debugging. So. Go ahead and uh, get over to iTunes, and we're going to click and drag this IPA to the library, and then go ahead and replace. And let's make sure it's sync, sync, sunk. And we're going to scroll down here. Simple app, go ahead and select that, and then choose apply. Okay, now. You're thinking, Brent, you told me that it was only 4.9 megabytes. Well, the IPA is a zipped file, and that's the file that uh, gets deployed to the App Store. So this 12 megabytes is the uncompressed app. All right, it's going to sync. Come on, install simple app. All right, very good. Now, at this point, once it's installed, let us go back to Flash Professional. And when we do a debug session, we want to click Debug. And we want to choose Begin Remote Debug Session and, of course, ActionScript 3. So go ahead and select that. Now it switches views. And we switch over to the device. And now we go ahead and start the app. And if we look over here, notice it says waiting for the player to connect. And hey, look, it's connected. Now if I press, hey, you click the square. Guess what? Hey, you click the polygon. Awesome. Now notice, even though this is plugged into my computer, you know, I can unplug the, the device. It's not, it's not doing USB. It's doing Wi-Fi. Notice, hey, 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 look at that, look at that. Very nice. Okay, so that's how you debug. Now, obviously, this app isn't very involved, and we're going to cover that later. Go ahead and stop the debug session, and let's talk about the app descriptor file, because I want you to get a sense for how the UI of the um, application settings relate to the device. So I'm just kind of pulling this up here for fun. Uh, let's go ahead and click File, Open. And we want to choose this app XML. Go ahead and open that. Now, if you've ever created Air apps, you'll this a lot of this will be familiar. It'll be similar things. You know, you have things like uh, the namespace. And notice here we have the ID. This is the app ID. We have the version number. We have the file name, and we have a description. This is uh, metadata that you can add to it for the uh, App Store. And then we have other information 
that's being used, for example, uh, if you're doing localization. Um, notice here we have some things like full screen. This is uh, for Air to, to set up for the app. Full screen is true. Here's the auto orients. Remember, uh, if we said auto orients to true, then we'll get those events. Here's the aspect ratio we set. Here's the render mode. Uh, these things here relate to air. Now this iPhone, check this out. We have requested display resolution high, and then we have info edition. So these are unique to the iPhone. Like if you were to look at your Android app XML, a lot of these would be very similar nearly identical here, but here this is iPhone specific. The ones that's specific is this uh, requested high resolution. And then notice we have this info additions. This one is key to understand. Info additions allow you to set things that go into the info p list. Uh, the p list is the file that it describes about the app that's in the bundle when you upload it to the app store. So here you have things like UI device family and it's we're just targeting the iPhone. If you're familiar with the other types of uh, info plist keys, things like requires camera or uh, what's that other one? Uh, anyway, there's a number of them. I'll cover that in another tutorial because there are some specific things that you want to do. So let's say you want to when you upload this app, you just want it to be supported on devices that have a front-facing camera, for example. So that'll work on the iPhone 4, the iPad 2, stuff like that. Uh, iPod Touch, fourth generation. So that's where this information comes in. But anyway, that is the app descriptor file. Pretty cool stuff. And stay tuned. I'm going to post more tutorials. We're going to cover a lot of the cool Air uh, mobile APIs. In fact, we're going to cover most of all of them. And this will be great. Thanks for watching.